Hello and welcome to SNS webinars. Let me start today by wishing you all a very, very happy new year. On behalf of our President, Professor Yoko Kato and Vice President, Professor Shubin and the members of the SNS Education Committee, we thank all our viewers for their wonderful support that you have extended to us in the last two years. We hope you have already received the entire catalog of the ACNS webinars which contains around 617 lectures all of which have been arranged topic wise for the benefit of the young neurosurgeons. If you have not then you may get the link from our Facebook and Twitter pages or alternatively subscribe to the mailing list through the link which is seen in the description part below this video. Coming back to today's webinar, the first speaker for today is our distinguished faculty from India, Professor Mallabhaskar Rao. Professor Rao is the professor and former HOD of Department of Neurosurgery at the Nimans, Bangalore, India. He is an EC member of the Indian Epilepsy Society and also the president-elect of the Indian Epilepsy Association. He was the past president of the Indian Society for Stereotactic and Functional Neurosurgery and the past continental vice president of the World Society for Stereotactic and Functional Neurosurgery Committee of the WHO. FNS. He has received several grants for various international projects and is also a noted author with several publications in various period journals. We are extremely honored to have him today at our webinars and today we will be talking about evolution of concepts in epilepsy surgery. The speaker for the second session of today is our honored guest from China, Professor Xiao Biao Chang. Professor Chang is the Director of Neurosurgery and Professor of Shongshan Hospital, Funan University, China. He is the Vice Chairman of the Neuroendoscopy Committee of the Chinese Medical Doctors Association and the Vice Chairman of the Neurotumor Branch of the Shanghai Anti-Cancer Association. We are extremely honored to have him today at the webinars and today he will be talking about endoscopic surgical approach to the third ventricle. The chair for the first session of today's webinar is our honored guest from Brussels, Belgium, Professor Christian Raftopoulos. Professor Raftopoulos is the professor and head of department of neurosurgery at the St. Luke's Hospital, Brussels. Professor Raftopoulos' scientific contribution includes the development of new classification of intracranial pressure waves and development of modified surgical techniques for chiari malformations, meningocils, and aneurysms. Currently, he is particularly involved in epilepsy surgery and his considerable work is reflected in more than 100 articles of which he is author and or co-author and have been published in various period journals. He was the past general secretary and the president of the French language neurosurgery society also known as the Society de Neurochirurgie de Lanque Francaise. We are extremely honored to have him today and extremely grateful to him for accepting our invitation to chair the first session of today's webinar. The chair for the second session of today's webinar is our honorable guest from India, Professor Avdesh Jaiswal. Professor Jaiswal is a traditional professor at the SGPGI Lucknow and he is a specialist in minimally invasive neurosurgery of the brain. He has published several papers in endoscopic brain surgeries and is also an invited faculty to several workshops and conferences conducted around the country. We are extremely grateful to him for accepting our invitation to chair the second session of today's webinar. On behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President of Yoko Kato, I would like to welcome both the speakers, chairs and the wonderful audiences to this online platform of ACNS webinars. A very warm welcome to our colleagues in China and we are extremely grateful to Professor Shubin for broadcasting this webinar on the WeChat channel. Dr. Lubun Singh from Malaysia is my co-host for today and with that introduction I would like to hand over this online podium to our first chair, Professor Christian Raftopoulos. Thank you for this invitation. I'm always very pleased to participate at the SCNS uh, education because of the lecture that I have the opportunity to, to listen. The subject today, uh, the first subject will be the drug refractory epilepsy managed by surgery. And I think that it's one of the most exciting subjects that, that we can have because we are dealing with the cortex. And the cortex, as you know, is probably one of the most complex structure in the world. And the, the neurosurgeon, the epileptic neurosurgeon deals with that kind of structure, very highly complex. And in my practice, I will divide epilepsy surgery in the first aspect, it is investigation epilepsy surgery. And then uh, the second part is therapeutic epilepsy surgery. And in the therapeutic epilepsy surgery, we will remove lesion, we'll perform disconnection, we'll perform stimulation. And for some people, we can also 
do therapeutic surgery by irradiation. So I have many, there, there are a few controversies and I have already a few questions for the next speaker. So I'll give you the, the, the opportunity to present your lecture and that I am very eager to listen. Thank you for that. So uh, good evening and uh, uh, good afternoon. First of all, I'm thankful to the leadership of the ACNS uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity as well as uh, continuing uh, the webinar series in the post-pandemic uh, era also. So I'll give you uh, some uh, idea about uh, how things uh, evolved uh, in epilepsy surgery. And uh, I have no uh, financial uh, disclosures. Uh, some of the views uh, presented in this webinar are personal. This presentation is uh, more uh, tuned or tailored to uh, developing uh, world. And I have used a few images from the public uh, domain. The webinar is uh, comprehensive. I'll be touching a few aspects uh, in, the, in the evolution. So first, I'll uh, I'll take you through uh, the uh, need or necessity to know about the evolution of the concept. Why why we should uh, know about these things, and uh, by by studying uh, the institution established institutions, how they developed epilepsy surgery programs will give some idea to the uh, future uh, uh, epilepsy surgery program. So this is how I have organized my uh, presentation. So first of all, uh, I would like to pay tribute to the founders uh, of uh, uh, Neurological uh, Society of India uh, way back in uh, 1951, uh, who started uh, uh, epilepsy surgery along with the mainstream uh, neurosurgery and performed a substantial number of uh, procedures. In uh, mid-90s in the post-MRI era, uh, I had an opportunity to re-initiate uh, epilepsy surgery at uh, Sri Chitratirunal Institute at uh, Trivandrum uh, in the Kerala uh, state of uh, India and uh, uh, established a program which subsequently became a model uh, for the developing world, not only at this institute, uh, uh, our uh, group and uh, like-minded uh, uh, people, both from neurology and neurosurgery, uh, went around the uh, 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 country uh, as well as outside country and uh, uh, supported the development of uh, new epilepsy surgery uh, uh, programs. And uh, uh, I'm very glad uh, to uh, uh, inform the, the participants. Now in India, uh, starting from uh, mid-90s, uh, uh, 12,000 uh, epilepsy surgery procedures have been performed across uh, uh, 60 centers over the past uh, 25 years. And the published outcome of uh, these uh, uh, centers is at par with the established uh, centers in the, in the industrialized world. So this uh, kindled interest in uh, many uh, new neurosurgical centers uh, to initiate uh, epilepsy surgery uh, programs so for uh, for uh, for the uh, for the benefit of uh, uh, young uh, um, neurology neurosurgery colleagues who want to initiate uh, uh, let me share uh, this uh, uh, few thoughts one is uh, uh, the success of epilepsy surgery program uh, depends on uh, early identification of potential surgical uh, candidates and then uh, offer uh, uh, and select ideal candidates from these uh, uh, from these cohort or one is early time is very crucial and second one is uh, we have to optimize our resources so we have to identify candidates who are destined or likely to have seizure cure or control following the surgical procedure so that our resources can be uh, optimally utilized. There are two uh, basic uh, requirements to start uh, uh, epilepsy surgery programs. One, there should be a medical uh, infrastructure 
so that uh, which enables identification of the prospective surgical candidates and then uh, uh, there needs to be a comprehensive epilepsy care uh, program where these people with drug resistant epilepsy are subjected to multi uh, disciplinary evaluation to find out whether surgery can be performed or not and uh, uh, these are the uh, uh, absolute uh, minimum requirements of course one is infrastructure uh, and then uh, technology technology is mostly uh, basic uh, minimum is uh, video easy telemetry and then uh, good uh, quality uh, mr imaging these are the two uh, basic uh, requirements and from the neurosurgery uh, whatever is used in the mainstream neurosurgery is the uh, thing which is required for epilepsy surgery also mostly uh, of course uh, for invasive evaluation needs uh, uh, different type of uh, 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 infrastructure and uh, technology but uh, please uh, note that the investment uh, in uh, developing epilepsy surgery program is more in more in uh, more in the team uh, especially uh, I'm a team leader uh, with a with a motivated uh, team can uh, develop uh, uh, epilepsy su surgery program successfully now uh, let let us uh, let us uh, go through some institutions which are, which are, how they evolved for a period of uh, time so uh, let me first take you to london this is 1860s so many things were happening it was a very turbulent uh, period in london so darwin came with uh, his theory of uh, evolution uh, joseph lister came uh, with uh, anti sepsis uh, galton came with the uh, theories of heredity heredity and uh, florence uh, nightingale started uh, the uh, school of uh, medicine in london and the precursor of uh, general medical council uh, was uh, uh, created uh, in 1858 and also new uh, specialists as well as specialist hospitals were emerging uh, in uh, london so that's during that time this uh, national hospital uh, was uh, uh, was founded uh, in uh, london in 1859 and this is the first hospital in the world established specifically for patients with neurological neurological disorders and the hospital management uh, uh, appointed uh, doctors uh, from a wide uh, uh, areas of uh, expertise and uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, appointments were made uh, to attract uh, to the hospital the attention of the uh, scientific uh, as well as uh, uh, philanthropic uh, aspects from the throughout the world so these uh, uh, names uh, are uh, very familiar to uh, all of you uh, uh, among uh, this uh, group of uh, consultants uh, let me highlight uh, the contributions uh, of uh, uh, four uh, uh, four uh, consultants the first one is uh, hulings uh, uh, jackson so he is uh, jackson actually defined the word uh, epilepsy and uh, the how uh, the, he uh, he uh, emphasized that the seizures are of uh, cerebral cortical origin and then there is a discharge of uh, neuronal uh, energy to uh, to initiate a, a seizure and uh, the 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 cortical localization as well as the concept of uh, focal epilepsy also was uh, ob observed by uh, hulings jackson and uh, he also emphasized uh, the uh, identification of the cause uh, of epilepsy in a in a given uh, person he also worked uh, in the post ictal state as, as well as uh, in the field of uh, epileptic uh, psychosis uh, in relation to br brain and uh, mind uh, 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 debate the next one is uh, david uh, ferrier uh, in in contrast to uh, jackson uh, david uh, ferrier made uh, uh, extraordinary contributions in the in the in the in the laboratory experiments especially working with the primates uh, he performed uh, cortical uh, stimulation and uh, identified uh, uh, the relation of electrical stimulation with the semiology which is observed in during the epilepsy 
uh, of course uh, uh, victor uh, horsley uh, again made uh, brilliant uh, contributions in the field of uh, cerebral uh, uh, localization also uh, performed uh, the first uh, uh, neurosurgical uh, procedure uh, for uh, for epilepsy uh, in contrast to uh, all the three uh, sir william uh, gowers uh, made uh, monumental uh, contributions uh, in the field of uh, clinical uh, epileptology and then uh, uh, he wrote uh, uh, like uh, uh, the manual of diseases of the nervous system which became like a bible uh, of neurology and then published a huge number of uh, uh, papers and uh, books uh, related to epilepsy so uh, you you notice the uh, trend where people from different areas of expertise were brought together and made to work uh, uh, together and that made uh, significant uh, uh, contribution uh, in, in in the field of epilepsy so by 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 the year 1909 when the ILAE was founded, uh, already epilepsy surgery has been uh, established uh, as an alternative uh, method to treat uh, people with uh, chronic epilepsy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there were uh, there were uh, uh, complications and uh, 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 quality of life issues because uh, Sir Victor Horsley. Uh, used to resect, uh, identify and then resect uh, motor cortex. So people were cured of epilepsy but became uh, hemiplegic as part of the surgery. Uh, but what made a uh, big difference uh, is possibly the First World War. So uh, all the uh, there was a disruption uh, in in the in the progress. Uh, but uh, uh, First World War led to uh, new. Uh, uh, development of new aspects in epilepsy surgery, especially uh, post-traumatic uh, uh, epilepsy. Uh, uh, Forrester, Kahal, Ortega, they, uh, they studied uh, the scar uh, uh, epilepsy and then uh, in uh, great uh, detail about the uh, histological and uh, cytological changes which were happening following the post-traumatic uh, epilepsy and uh, uh, Wilder uh, Penfield uh, worked with uh, Forrester and then learned about this uh, post-traumatic uh, epilepsy and uh, about the surgical uh, interventions and then subsequently uh, he did uh, his uh, first uh, temporal uh, resection uh, in, a, in a soldier with uh, post-traumatic uh, epilepsy uh, and uh, uh, he he has used uh, the available uh, technology of uh, those days uh, with uh, cerebral angiography as well as uh, uh, pneumo uh, encephalography. And uh, uh, he uh, uh, established the Montreal Neurological Institute in 1934 and uh, performed largely uh, uh, lesional epilepsy surgery. And Penfield used it to comment that. Uh, uh, in the uh, preoperative evaluation like uh, pneumoencephalography and angiography as well as uh, uh, paraoperative observation like uh, there is an area of uh, gliosis, there is an area of uh, lesion. If these things were there, then only use it to uh, perform surgery. Otherwise, surgery used to be, uh, used to be abandoned. Uh, and subsequently, uh, following the uh, invention of uh, Easy by Hans uh, Berger, the uh, Gibbs uh, couple as well as uh, uh, Bailey uh, started uh, performing uh, epilepsy surgery, especially uh, uh, anterior temporal resections in the United States uh, based on uh, uh, Easy uh, findings. So, uh, Penfield is lesional epilepsy surgery and uh, 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 Gibbs and Bailey is a focused based uh, epilepsy uh, surgery. Uh, uh, Zero Mengel uh, commented that uh, neither, uh, uh, neither Penfield uh, nor Bailey uh, resected uh, hippocampus uh, in, the, in their initial series, uh, fearing uh, the behavioral uh, consequences. And it was not uh, very clear in the history uh, who actually uh, started uh, the uh, resection of the uh, hippocampus. Uh, and also he commented that, uh, but for the placebo 
effect of these early uh, surgical attempts possibly epilepsy surgery would not have been pursued uh, subsequently because of the uh, less number of people achieving cure and uh, uh, control of course uh, uh, subsequently uh, uh, largely uh, to the efforts uh, of uh, uh, the uh, jasper herbert uh, jasper the uh, neurological uh, colleague of uh, uh, wilder penfield the role of uh, uh, amygdala uh, and uh, hippocampus uh, have been identified and have been included uh, in the resection leading to better outcomes so penfield used it to do all surgeries under local anesthesia perform cortical stimulation if the stimulation elicits function preserve the structure if the stimulation elicits seizure reset the structure so this was the uh, this was the uh, procedure at uh, mni uh, in uh, those days in uh, 50s uh, in in contrast to penfield uh, uh, mare faulkner worked uh, at the uh, motsley uh, hospital in uh, london it's a psychiatry hospital so he could not perform uh, uh, awake uh, craniotomy and uh, cortical stimulation like uh, penfield so he performed all his surgical procedures under uh, general uh, anesthesia uh, taking advantage uh, of uh, anesthesia uh, mare faulkner performed uh, en bloc uh, uh, resections and uh, his uh, colleagues uh, documented uh, the histological typical histological changes of uh, neuronal loss in the ca1 ca3 ca4 uh, sectors and came up came up with this uh, entity called uh, mesial uh, temporal uh, sclerosis attending uh, these uh, meetings uh, in uh, late uh, 50s uh, a brazilian uh, neurosurgeon uh, paulo uh, niemeyer came with this uh, elegant uh, concept of uh, selective amygdala hippocampectomy uh proving the point uh, that uh, uh contributions uh, come from uh, worldwide including from the developing world uh, to this field uh of course in uh, 60s uh late 60s and uh, 70s uh there was a decline of epilepsy surgery worldwide for uh, several reasons one is indiscriminate uh, use uh, of the surgical modality and then lack of uh, proper selection and post operative to follow but uh, one of the major reasons for decline in epilepsy surgery is the advent of uh, uh, anti seizure medication like uh, phenytoin and uh, carbamazepine and uh, now coming to the third uh, phase of uh, interest uh, nasa uh, has uh, uh, developed uh, telemetry to monitor uh, chimpanzees Uh, which are uh, uh, sent to the uh, space uh, uh, and uh, uh, subsequently uh, this technology uh, the telemetry uh, became uh, uh, available for uh, civilian uh, use uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, UCLA at uh, Los Angeles uh, and uh, 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 this uh, computerized uh, techniques Uh, became uh, gradually uh, became available initially in the industrial industrialized world and uh, subsequently rest of the world to monitor people with the uh, progression to epilepsy uh, you are all uh, familiar with the uh, monumental uh, contributions of uh, uh, ct scan initially and uh, mr imaging subsequently uh, in identifying uh, these lesions so again uh, there is a shift from initially penfield time lesional surgery then subsequently it's a lesion and focus again with the advent of uh, imaging it became again uh, lesion uh, uh, oriented uh, uh, surgery so there were there were with uh, uh, with uh, uh, with advent of uh, new technology the the practice of epilepsy surgery also has been changing of course one of the most uh, important uh, things is understanding the surgically remediable lesional epilepsy syndromes like uh, mesial temporal sclerosis and other discrete uh, neocortical 
lesions as well as uh, hemispheric uh, uh, hemispheric pathology there is there was improvement in the surgical techniques also like for example dennis uh, spencer came uh, with this uh, uh, modified uh, procedure where limited uh, anterior temporal neocortical resection was performed and then large amount of uh, uh, radical mesial temporal resection was performed and of course uh, uh, gazi uh, yasargil as a uh, popularized uh, selective uh, amygdala hippocampectomy once again uh, using uh, uh, microsurgical uh, techniques and now uh, the natural history of uh, several uh, uh, the uh, epileptic disorders uh, has been uh, identified uh, for example uh, 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 new centers uh, uh, became familiar that uh, if they start their epilepsy surgery programs at uh, this end of the spectrum uh, where uh, identification of uh, uh, a surgical candidate uh, is relatively easier with uh, non invasive evaluation as well as uh, surgical procedures are standard and uh, outcome is uh, assured so that's how uh, new centers came up uh, with uh, operating at this end of the spectrum and then gradually over a period of uh, time they have learned uh, to uh, take care of uh, more difficult cases or simply refer them to more uh, established uh, uh, centers so this is how uh, pre surgical evaluation is performed uh, uh, at present see this young girl uh, if you uh, look at the behavior there is a right hand uh, dystonic uh, posturing suggesting uh, uh, involvement of the left uh, basal ganglia so we know that uh, she is uh, starting from the left uh, mesial temporal structures will uh, go through left uh, amygdala and left uh, basal ganglia amygdala merges with globus pallidus so when schizer propagates from amygdala to hippocampus and amygdala to globus pallidus and basal ganglia the right upper limb has gone into dystonic uh, posturing and both uh, interictal uh, as well as uh, ictal uh, eg is suggestive of uh, schizer origin uh, from the left uh, uh, mesial temporal area and uh, as expected here uh, there is a left uh, hippocampal sclerosis suggested by volume reduction as well as uh, hyper intense uh, uh, signal in the left hippocampus and she also had uh, impaired verbal uh, memory uh, suggesting that uh, the uh, schizer uh, origin uh, is from the left uh, uh, mesial temporal uh, sclerosis and she is an ideal surgical candidate and surgery has been uh, standardized the extent of resection in the dominant hemisphere and uh, non dominant hemisphere mesial as well as uh, lateral uh, neocortical resection and uh, uh, there uh, the uh, class 1 uh, uh, randomized control uh, trial has come uh, which uh, uh, proved the superior efficacy of surgery among the people with chronic drug resistant mesial temporal lobe epilepsy of course subsequently two more randomized trials also proved this point for people who were not suitable or are willing for resective surgery uh, uh, gamma knife uh, radio surgery uh, became uh, available of course uh, the subsequent uh, trial uh, randomized uh, uh, trial uh, proved uh, the outcomes were actually in fact uh, uh, inferior to uh, resective surgery but the modality is uh, still uh, reserved for people uh, who are uh, unwilling or unfit uh, for surgical uh, interventions uh, once uh, the uh, uh, temporal lobe resections uh, uh, have uh, became established standardized and popularized and uh, uh, centers uh, again uh, expanded uh, and improved uh, the uh, programs uh, to include uh, cortical uh, resections and uh, extra temporal uh, resections and uh, the uh, malformations of uh, uh, cortical development 
uh, the prototype being uh, focal cortical dysplasia uh, became uh, one of the most uh, common substrates uh, underlying uh, drug resistant focal epilepsy, especially in uh, children and uh, adolescents. And then uh, apart from uh, established centers, even uh, centers uh, uh, in the developing world, for example, uh, uh, the uh, All India Institute uh, and uh, uh, Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute and then Nimhans uh, in Bangalore and other uh, centers uh, as well started taking uh, uh, care of these uh, people with uh, various types of uh, malformations of cortical development. For example, this young girl who had a uh, frontal lobe epilepsy was found to be having a right uh, uh, frontal dysplasia and uh, she underwent uh, uh, gross total uh, uh, resection of the malformation and uh, this young boy uh, who had a uh, temporal, temporal lobe epilepsy uh, with tectal onset in the uh, te uh, right uh, temporal lobe had a large uh, uh, malformation in the right temporal region uh, which was uh, again uh, end block resection was done and this was uh, nodular heterotopia as well as uh, polymicrogaric uh, cortex. So uh, uh, this is the extent of resection. So technology is helping to uh, take up uh, uh, difficult cases uh, 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 where the substrate is uh, uh, closed adjacent or involving the eloquent cortex and from surface where it's extending from surface to the ventricle. Uh, technology is helping us to remove these uh, lesions uh, completely uh, without uh, causing much uh, deficit. For example, this uh, young child had a complex uh, D-net which was resected and this young girl uh, has got a ganglioglioma which is extending from uh, uh, surface uh, all the way down up to the ventricle. These are the cases uh, where using, uh, using technology we were able to remove the lesions uh, completely. But now again, uh, things are uh, things are uh, uh, changing. Now, now we have uh, very um, very fast uh, uh, performing uh, 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 computers and then high end technology. Uh, again, uh, uh, epilepsy surgery is uh, is uh, gradually changing. So, young uh, generation uh, who are keen to epi develop epilepsy surgery uh, programs uh, should be uh, should be uh, uh, familiar and also should keep their uh, eyes and uh, ears open uh, to see what is happening uh, in this field of course every major development in mainstream neurosurgery uh, is applicable to uh, epilepsy surgery uh, as well uh, for example uh, stereo uh, easy uh, is emerging in a in a big way uh, worldwide uh, of course it's a it's a it's a based on uh, uh, network uh, hypothesis uh, french and uh, italian uh, schools developed uh, stereo uh, easy uh, in the 1950s and uh, 60s and uh, uh, recently uh, North America, especially United States, uh, uh, taking it take, took it up in a in a big way. Uh, Cleveland uh, Clinic uh, has uh, uh, performed uh, stereoisy in a large uh, number of uh, uh, people with difficult to localize epilepsies as well as failed uh, epilepsy uh, uh, cases, and then proven the the uh, beneficial uh, utility of uh, stereo. Uh, easy and now uh, robotic uh, technology is used uh, for uh, implantation and uh, uh, you, you you see now uh, the uh, emerging uh, uh, imaging uh, modalities uh, are actually uh, helping us to to place uh, these uh, stereo uh, easy electrodes uh, in uh, uh, precise uh, uh, targets based on the uh, anatomo electroclinical hypothesis we can uh, we can place uh, these uh, uh, these electrodes and then also uh, avoid uh, uh, deficits uh, 
uh, and uh, vessels and uh, uh, eloquent uh, uh, areas and then uh, come with a precise uh, data which is uh, which is useful to plan uh, surgical uh, procedures uh, laser ablations are uh, uh, emerging as a uh, uh, um, like a mainstream option for uh, selected uh, substates like uh, mesial temporal sclerosis and uh, in fact uh, in uh, in uh, united states uh, maybe in uh, in some of the european centers uh, christian can comment on this uh, some of the european centers uh, also the resective uh, anterior temporal resection is actually coming down because uh, uh, one is uh, uh, availability of uh, laser ablations uh, as well as uh, uh, some other uh, alternate uh, uh, devices for neurostimulation uh, as well as uh, some new uh, newer generation anti seizure medications also uh, but in india as well as many developing uh, countries the numbers of epilepsy surgery are actually increasing so uh, this is uh, the uh, um, uh, using uh, lit uh, laser ablations for uh, uh, hypothalamic uh, hematoma so atrotopic uh, nodules uh, deep seated uh, uh, foci uh, these are all uh, suitable uh, uh, candidates for uh, laser ablations uh, also we must uh, uh, realize that uh, uh, among uh, the uh people with uh, chronic uh, drug resistant uh, epilepsy where anti seizure medications fail uh, only 15 to 20% are suitable for resective surgery so there is a large uh, group of uh, people uh, where uh, anti seizure medications will not work and they are not suitable candidates for resective surgery for various reasons uh, for them neuro stimulation is uh, uh, emerging uh, as an alternative of course uh, the uh, role of uh, uh, neuro stimulation the utility of neuro stimulation is limited uh, in the uh, developing world uh, largely uh, because of uh, uh, economic uh, reasons uh, uh, rather than uh, scientific or technical uh, reasons uh, now uh we we know uh, broadman uh, areas uh, in uh, in epilepsy surgery planning for example if you want to implant uh, stereo ez electrodes those uh, broadman uh, numbers are not uh, very much useful so uh, number of centers uh, are coming up uh, uh, with this uh, parcelation uh, one uh, uh, one a uh, group uh, uh, led by uh, dennis spencer at uh, ail came with this uh, ail uh, brain atlas so each uh, structure for example anterior uh, hippocampus body of hippocampus tail of the hippocampus uh, anterior parahippocampal gyrus posterior parahippocampal gyrus they are all given specific numbers so in future it is possible that uh, say for example uh anterior parahippocampal gyrus is the seizure origin by say high frequency oscillations uh and then it is possible to say that uh, we have to resect uh, this particular area of the anterior uh, parahippocampal gyrus it is not uh, temporal lobectomy it is not a selective amygdalohippocampectomy but it's a selective resection of the anterior parahippocampal gyrus whatever by whatever means like uh, surgical very small minimally invasive endoscopic uh, approaches my colleague uh, in india dr sarachandra is popularizing endoscopic approaches as well as uh, minimally uh, invasive approaches with thermocoagulation so some sort of uh, laser ablations thermal ablations uh endoscopic uh, procedures will evolve to do selective procedures not selective amygdalo hippocampectomy alone just a selective resection of seizer origin the the focal origin of the seizure like anterior entorenal cortex anterior hippocampus the piriform cortex this sort of procedures will evolve in the future and also 
there is a virtual epilepsy patient atlas there uh, now uh, available and uh, uh, you can you can have a you can have a model uh, epilepsy patient uh, based on the uh, stereo easy data and you can do virtual epilepsy surgery uh, where uh, based on the uh, uh, epileptogenicity index you can uh, do virtual surgery and if you can resect uh, one uh, part of the network what is the likely she is the outcome and if you suppose if it is 40% if you include another node in the network the outcome may become from 40 to maybe 50 or 60% like that you can you can plan virtual epilepsy surgery you can practice you can during the simulation surgery and then use the uh, data uh, for both counseling as well as uh, uh, developing a surgical uh, strategy in future of course a uh, uh, lot of work is happening uh, in uh, uh, non surgical options like one is therapeutic uh, ultrasound and uh, apart from uh, uh, using uh, focused uh, uh, ultrasound for uh, uh, essential tremor it is uh, being used uh, in few cases of uh, uh, mesial temporal sclerosis uh, also and its uh, uh, indications uh, will uh, will expand uh, in uh, due course lot of uh, basic science uh, uh, research is uh, happening in uh, in uh, detecting the high frequency oscillations especially where the uh, seizures uh, uh, start and uh, our group uh, at uh, nemans bangalore uh, published a uh, did a work uh, in identifying these high frequency oscillations uh, in the uh, pre surgical non invasive evaluation using uh, magneto uh, encephalography and uh, resection of uh, these uh, areas with uh, high frequency oscillations uh, was found to be of uh, uh, prognostic significance uh, uh, to predict uh, the seizure outcome also along with uh, uh, focused uh, ultrasound uh, optogenetics also is uh, is an emerging technique again uh, targeting uh, areas of uh, pathological uh, uh, ripples and uh, high frequency oscillation so that uh, uh, resective surgery uh, will uh, will uh, its role will become less and less uh, in uh, especially uh, uh, non uh, uh, lesional epilepsy where we can identify small area of uh, or seizure origin and then target the area by non uh, invasive uh, means and uh, 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 european uh, uh, epilepsy surgery centers uh, have pulled the all the surgical specimens and uh, in the european uh, epilepsy brain bank uh, there are more than uh, 10000 uh, surgical specimens are there and uh, this sort of uh, rich uh, 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 database is actually uh, helping uh, in uh, coming with uh, new uh, classification for example focal cortical uh, dysplasia uh, classification is being uh, revised to include uh, genetic uh, uh, component uh, uh, as well as molecular component just like uh, how the glioma uh, uh, classification is uh, emerging based on the uh, molecular uh, um, genetics uh, same way uh, this uh, 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 Focal cortical dysplasia as well as the malformations are also uh, being uh, the reclassified, uh, and also this uh, European Brain Bank uh, is uh, uh, is uh, useful uh, even in uh, predicting uh, seizure outcome and also uh, guiding clinicians 
about uh, uses of uh, anti seizer medication uh, i wish uh, similar to european uh, epilepsy brain bank even uh, asian uh, asian uh, cns will facilitate uh, establishment of uh, asian uh, epilepsy uh, brain bank uh, also uh, which again uh, will help us to refine uh, the treatments and uh, uh and then uh, guide uh, regarding uh, this anti seizure medication continuation post surgery of course uh, uh, all all these processes have got uh, their own uh, intrinsic uh, uh, and inherent uh, risks uh, which uh, uh, fortunately uh, due to the efforts of uh, the entire epilepsy team are quite uh, minimal and at par with uh, the anti the adverse uh, uh, effects of uh, uh, anti seizure uh, uh, medications and uh, finally i'll uh, leave you with uh, three major global challenges one is of course developing uh, new comprehensive epilepsy care centers the second one is to use uh, existing epilepsy centers uh, more effectively in terms of uh, uh, expanding and improving the uh, services to take care of uh, um, difficult uh, uh, cases uh, uh, as well as uh, in terms of uh, uh, training and uh, finally uh, intensifying uh, uh, research into basic uh, mechanisms of epilepsy uh where uh, the actual uh resective surgery indications will uh, progressively will come down uh, over a uh, over a period of time this uh, uh, uh new uh, centers uh, uh should not uh, discard uh, the resected uh, uh, epilepsy uh, surgery tissue uh, because it's like a gold mine for research uh you develop facilities or you collaborate with the centers which have got the uh, facilities uh i hope this uh, information uh sharing is uh, useful to young uh, participants who are attending this webinar to develop uh, uh, epilepsy surgery programs and uh, help uh, uh, hundreds and thousands Uh, of these uh, people uh, who are suffering and undergoing uh, great uh, hardship uh, in their lives and thank you this is my team at uh, nimans and uh, number of institutions have supported uh, me and uh, my team and uh, we are grateful and thankful to all of them and thank you very much for your attention thank you thank you Thank you for this presentation very uh, very very interesting uh, I think that we can we can we can discuss about epilepsy surgery during during many hours but I will I will focus on a few comment and few questions the first one is more a comment but I'm sure that you will say something about it. you you started telling us about countries with limited uh, means uh, i think that in the current world every country has limited means to to deal with patient because we are 8 billion on this earth in some countries like mine belgium we have a very high level of taxation to help to give uh treatment to as much as many people as possible and in other country the level of taxation is is lower but what's the future we are more and more and the resource of this earth is limited so i really think that we are every one of us are more and more in countries with with limited means <laughs> do you agree with that yeah actually someone commented that uh, uh, when epilepsy surgery comes every country is a developing country in the world <laughs> i agree with you <laughs> yeah next next point um, imagine that with all your knowledge 
tomorrow you start an epilepsy and you have to deal with the neurologist, really, really important. And the neurologist are telling you, we will perform an invasive EEG. I tell you immediately in my department, we are performing that using a robot, uh, the stealth auto guide of Medtronic. But, but, but. The neurologist propose you an invasive EEG. You have two main modalities. We have to put inside your brain 20 of 25 intraparenchymal electrodes. Of do you prefer three or four intraparenchymal electrodes and the rest subdurally, subdurally placed on your brain? What will you choose? Uh, my, uh, my, uh, uh, preference, uh, as well as a suggestion to the new centers, is to come up uh, with a very simple, straightforward cases to begin with. Uh, I think uh, there should be uh, adequate uh, experience of non-invasive evaluation as well as uh, standard uh, resections before taking up difficult cases. So when, when uh, the requirement of uh, invasive evaluation comes up, the institute where I worked uh, earlier, Sri Chitra Tirnal has published a paper. The number of candidates who are evaluated for extra temporal epilepsy and who are actually candidates for invasive evaluation, only 20% underwent uh, invasive evaluation, 80% did not undergo for various reasons. One of the main reasons is, for example, they're all MR negative cases, normal MR cases. And also the uh, invasive evaluation uh, is very expensive in India. Uh, electrodes are not manufactured in India. And we have to we have to import uh, we have to buy from Europe or United States and then pay in uh, dollars or euros. Uh, many of our patients are not able to afford, so that is one. But uh, we uh, after when when we started invasive evaluation, again we started with uh, uh, grids and strips. And uh, uh, now number of centers in India are uh, are performing. Uh, uh, invasive evaluation with uh, stereoisy. Actually, even a uh, couple of centers have got a robotic implantation also. Uh, again, uh, 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 these uh, uh, not many uh, people can afford uh, this sort of uh, evaluation. So, uh, in uh, uh, I I know that uh, some centers are uh, re-sterilizing the electrodes. Uh, and then uh, uh, using uh, just to share the cost among people. Now, uh, I think uh, this uh, uh, subdural grids and strips, uh, as well as uh, 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 stereoisy electrodes, so have been this issue has been debated uh, in many conferences. Uh, I, I, I personally, I feel that they have a complementary role. Uh, uh, we, we grew with the idea that uh, uh, grids are good for monitoring. For example, if you if you place the grid on motor cortex, language cortex, you can monitor. But then people who are who have a lot of expertise in stereoisy uh, claim that uh, the the outermost electrode, which is close to the cortex, can be used for uh, 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 mapping as well. So they say that. Uh, 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 we don't need grids and strips for monitoring purpose. So I think, but the trend worldwide trend, including in India, trend in my practice is gradually moving more and more towards uh, uh, stereoisy and less and less uh, towards uh, grids and strips. But I feel that still they have they have some role still this one. What, what well, do you think? What do you think? 
Uh, what I think is I'm pushed in the back by the neurologist yeah. to put 20 electrodes in the brain. Yeah. But I, I, I prefer to reduce as much as possible the number yeah. of electrodes in the brain and yeah. to increase as much as possible the number of subdural electrodes. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, just one more comment is uh, uh, regarding the number of uh, stereoisy electrodes. Uh, in uh, meetings, often we hear that uh, if less than five electrodes are indicated, then probably stereoisy is not indicated. If more than 15 electrodes are indicated, then I think it's a fishing expedition. There is no clear hypothesis. So anywhere between uh, uh, five to 15, best is uh, say eight, nine, 10 electrodes are the best regarding the number. I mean, we should be able to convince the neurologist. Yes, but again, my question was with your brain. <laughs> 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 okay, we, I will go to my second question and I have many comments, uh, but it's so interesting. The second one is regarding selective amygdaloid hippocampectomy. Okay. I started performing more than 100 transylvian. I was very pleased with that because it's beautiful. It's a beautiful one, but it takes time. I know I'm performing all my procedure going through a trans T1 uh, cortex okay. uh, and going down along the insula to remove the hippocampus. Okay. What do you think? What is your way of doing it? Uh, again, uh, uh, I, I was trained. Uh, uh, I had some of my uh, training at, uh, at, uh, at Morsley. Uh, so Murray Faulkner, uh, Charles Polkey, and uh, uh, I was uh, 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 trained by Charles Polkey. So uh, irrespective of uh, uh, electrocorticography, uh, irrespective of selective approaches, this, the, 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 uh, the standard at Morsley is uh, a, uh, anterior temporal resection, standard anterior temporal resection. Uh, even uh, we, we were uh, initiating the epilepsy surgery program in India for the first time and uh, we wanted uh, good outcomes. So we first 200 cases standard resections were performed and uh, later we started doing selective procedures. But then we realized uh, that uh, apart from amygdala and hippocampus, there are changes in actually in the current institute where I'm working one thirty percent of cases had type one dysplasia in the temporal pole and superior temporal gyrus and other parts of the temporal neocortex. These were not detected by imaging. Had we done selective amygdalohypocampectomy, they would have been failures. And it's very difficult to convince a person for epilepsy surgery in India, and it's much more difficult to convince for resurgery, re-evaluation and resurgery. So we thought uh, standard uh, uh, procedures are better. And uh, even my colleague at uh, All India Institute, uh, Sarat Chandra, uh, he has published a paper that uh, actually there are uh, dual networks are there uh, in uh, 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 temporal lobe epilepsy. One uh, network goes through uh, uh, amygdala and hippocampus and uh, other network involves uh, temporal pole and uh, neocortex. So standard uh, resections are uh, standard anterior temporal resection along with amygdalohippocampectomy in our experience, in our setup was found to be better than selective amygdalohippocampectomy. Also, uh, there is a concern uh, regarding uh, uh, vascular uh, uh, complications. Of course, uh, your T1 uh, will uh, avoid uh, uh, injury to sylvian uh, vessels. Uh, but uh, even selective uh, amygdalohippocampectomy also, whichever approach you do, will have collateral damage. There is an extensive uh, white matter uh, damage uh, along the surgical trajectory. So selective amygdalohippocampectomy, in fact, it's not a selective procedure. There is a resection plus collateral damage together. I mean, if uh, probably if meticulously if you do postoperative imaging, there is uh, there are there are publications uh, suggesting uh, the the damage uh, whatever approach transylvian transcortical uh, 
a trans circle whatever approach you take there is some ex- some amount of damage is there of course how much it will clinically le- lead to deficits cognitive deficits is a different uh, issue but there is this one and i uh, uh, i think probably uh, we, we should both of us you and me should leave a message to young surgeons that they can start with standard temporal resections uh, and when they have experience orientation about amygdala hippocampus amygdala and hippocampus then maybe they can resort to uh, selective uh, amygdala hippocampectomy also one should know that uh, it's not a it's not a experience of the surgeon it's the experience of the entire epilepsy surgery team even neurologist uh, neuropsychologist radiologist should be able to identify candidates for selective resections because if you take uh, 100 people with uh, mesial temporal lobe epilepsy only 15 to 20 are suitable for selective amygdala hippocampectomy not all not all 100 because some of them will fail and it's very difficult to manage failures uh, in uh, in countries with limited resources that's my take of course okay. i know that many european colleagues are doing uh, uh, selective process yeah yeah, yeah yeah most of my procedure are selective or a little yeah. bit enlarged on the parahippocampus because i yeah. think most of the time i remove the parahippocampus and the anterior area but i perform exceptionally now extended temporal and and, and uh, hippocampus resection huh? Yeah, yeah. And when I have to do that, I do not remove that. I perform a low, low bar disconnection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I think I have many other comments, uh, Raja, but I think I have the time is limited as well as also means to treat the people. <laughs> Again, thank you for your presentation. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful presentation, wonderful discussion that followed. We learned a lot. and uh, we are extremely grateful to professor mala bhaskar rao and the chair professor raft powers for this beautiful session about evolution of concepts in epilepsy surgery uh, we will be moving on to the second session as we have lack of time so i'll hand this uh, podium over to our very honorable distinguished faculty from india who is a specialist in endoscopic brain surgeries professor avdesh jaiswal Professor Jaiswal, all yours. Thank you, Dr. Raja. Uh, it's my honor to be a part of this uh, webinar. And uh, as you know, that the uh, third ventricle is a very complex uh, uh, place to operate. It's very technically demanding. And endoscopic approaches are uh, increasingly uh, being performed now all over the globe. And uh, why it is important that because third ventricle is very deep located and there are a lot of vital structures around so and uh, traditionally we perform our microscopic approaches but now endoscopy is take, uh, coming in a big way so straight away i would like to invite our uh, speaker professor chang from china who is expert in endoscopic surgery and he will deliver a lecture on uh, endoscopic surgical approaches for third ventricle dr chang please there is a gentleman uh, uh, good evening My lecture is about endoscope because surgery for third ventricle. As you know, the third ventricle is located at the center of the brain and is surrounded by many uh, important structures. The third ventricle also is the center of the CSC circulation. Lesions in the third ventricle may cause visual hypothalamic uh, this is functioning and other symptoms such as hydrocephalus symptom and paralyzed symptom it is sent tumors in the third ventricle may classified into four parts of the third ventricle first is one located on the foramen moro second is at the middle of the third ventricle third is at the anterior part of the third ventricle and last is at the posterior of the third ventricle but sometimes the tumor may occupy the entire of third ventricle <clears throat> and sometimes uh, the patient ha- can have uh, multiple uh, tumors uh, in the third ventricle 
this patient have two tumors in the pseudovenulica. In the area of microsurgery, there are many approaches to uh, the pseudovenulica, but uh, in the area of endoscopy, we can uh, simp simply find these approaches to the pseudovenulica, such as transforminal approaches and uh, expanded transforminal trans choroid approaches and uh, LSO transnaminal terminus and uh, mid midline theta and the peri median theta, <coughs> theta approaches. And we also can use EA to recycle the tumor in the pseudoventricles. <coughs> to these approaches, there are three surgical approaches are frequently used. The first is expanded transforminal transcoroid approaches. <coughs> the second is EA, and the third is the theta approaches. You can see these, these three approaches. First, we induce the LSO transnaminal terminus. We use LSO trans uh, laminar terminus to resect the uh, anterior part of the pseudovenicles. This is a craniform tumor. We use these approaches to resect the tumor. After the tumor be removed, you can see the post operative MR. Next is the uh, uh, video. This uh, one man have uh, small tumors in the anterior of the part of the ventricle. The first way, uh, open the severe fissure and other basinal uh, system to release CSF and expose the lateral uh, <coughs> laminar terminators. You can see the lateral uh, uh, laminar terminators. We coagulated the small vessel. Then we cut the membrane and dissect the interface of the tumor. This tumor is hard and poor. Uh, blood supply. We use CUSA to debug the tumor. Then we continue to uh, dissect the tumor and uh, remove the tumor. Then we use uh, switch flu to hemostage of the tumor be removed, you can see the CT and the MR. Next is the chance of foramenal approaches. This approach is came to expose the tumor uh, about the uh, type A and type C. This is a craniform tumor. We use transcolossal or transforaminal approaches to resect the tumor. After the tumor be removed, you can see the posterior op post operative MR. This is the video. We use the uh, end port to transcortical approaches to into the lateral ventricle and uh, expose the tumor. We dissect the tumor. Uh, uh, interface is uh, canal. We don't resect the wall of the foramen. 
avoid to injury the war. We calculate and cut the base of the uh, crotoid uh, uh, plexus. They free the tumor and uh, take out the tumor. Of the tumor being removed, we use switches to some stage. It is a CT, post operative CT. The pathology is a mini tumor. Next is uh, this video is uh, a <clears throat> tumor. The uh, capimoma of uh, carotid plexus. The tumor is very soft. We will check the tumor from the polymer and uh, coagulate and cut the base of the uh, choroid plexus. Then we can enter the pseudoventricle. We can see the, can see the abduct and uh, posterior uh, commissure. The tumor be removed. You can see the MR. Next, uh, we can use uh, expanded uh, uh, trans foramina trans choroid approaches. This approach is trans choroid plus the trans uh, foramina. Uh, this approach can Expose the entire of the uh, pseudoventricle. This, this future uh, tells us if we use these approaches, we must uh, uh, coagulate and uh, cut the anterior septal vein. After cutting the vein, we can uh, dissect the fissure and uh, expand the foramen and uh, can expose the entire of the <coughs> pseudoventricle. This is a cranial foreign tumor case. You can see the tumor can be removed using the approaches. This is tumor can be exposed and tumor be removed. This video is about the aneurysm. The patient has recurrent IVH and the CTA and uh, DSA found it uh, has uh, AVM in the pineal region with aneurysm at the left wall uh, with, uh, of the pseudoventricle. We can see oh, <clears throat> we use these approaches. We coagulate and uh, cut the uh, anterior uh, septal vein and expand the foramen. This is the aneurysm. You can see. Uh, Thrombotic aneurysm. We dissect the aneurysm. This is the artery. The aneurysm is ruptured. We clip the uh, parent artery and cut the artery and then re remove the uh, aneurysm. You 
the posterior imaging shows a clipper. This is the AVM use gamma knife to reject this preoperative and postoperative DSA. Some, some patients uh, no uh, seromose treated uh, vein. In this case, you can see there are no uh, similar uh, <clears throat> uh, seromose treated vein, but uh, the seminal caudate vein instead of the vein. In this time, it is very <clears throat> uh, beneath to <clears throat> dissect the fissure. We don't uh, cut the uh, anterior septal vein. You can see the video. This is uh, also uh, a papilloma. Dissect the fissure. We cut the basin. You can see mesa into a medium. The tumor is very hard. We don't retract. Uh, we use these uh, expanding approaches. Is calculate the tumor will be removed. You can see a duct and a positive commissure, a memory body, and a tuber syndrome. Of the tumor being removed, you can see there are no tumors. This is our paper about these approaches. Next approaches is uh, CEDA approaches. CEDA approaches, we can use the midline CEDA approaches and the perimeter CEDA approaches to resect the pioneer region tumors and the uh, tumors of cinemas. This is a girl with uh, mixed uh, uh, germicidal tumors but during the operation, we expose the tumors of the tumor be removed. This is a preoperative MR, and after the tumor be removed, we first introduce the middle line theta approaches. This is a surgical uh, position. Uh, this patient uh, have been uh, two types of uh, uh, we be shunting and a gamma life, but uh, he also has obstructive hydrocephalus. So we use uh, these approaches to resect the tumor. To impact uh, the uh, break the uh, PCV, we use only use the right side of the uh, cordial germinal uh, system. This is a choroidal plexus. We dissect the tumor from the brainstem. The tumor be removed from right side. It's a duct. The genetic duct will be shunting. Tumor be removed. Next is about the endoscopic uh, perimedial theta approaches. Uh, this, we also use this uh, operative uh, position. First case, you can see this is a, a 20 years boy with headache 
uh, you can see the CT, MR. The patient have hydrocephalus, we use the ETV to recheck the hydrocephalus <coughs> two weeks after <coughs> ETV, we resect the tumor. You can see the tumor is very large. The tumor uh, insert of the CM fissure is very large, a six centimeter above the tumor. We use a uh, uh, left side uh, perimeter. So we cut the <coughs> bridge vein. We open the right side cordial uh, germinal system. It is very easy. You can see the tumor. We use a mini retractor to help for to retract to expose the tumor. The draining vein to the ICV. This is the MPCHA the supply, blood supply. We cut the draining vein. It's more vein. Small artery, the tector vein. We dissect the tumor through the brainstorm. The last uh, uh, blood supply of the right, then we remove the tumor. You can see the sort of ventricle. You see the, the tumor about uh, after the tumor being removed, the blood. Uh, FP and the beta ICG are uh, normal. <coughs> this is the post operative MR. Is our, this is our paper about the uh, midline theta produce. This is our paper uh, we use <coughs> about the principle of the uh, CVP, uh, CPM, CPV. This is our paper about the uh, com, um, com comparison of the midline and the uh, perimedial CDR produce. CDR produce also came for you resect the tumor in the <coughs> centimeters uh, of the medial infra and the posterior part of the uh, centimeters. You can see these tumors. There are two factors affect the operative result of the uh, cerebral tumors. The first is uh, obstructive hydrocephalus. You can see uh, the girl, the uh, pre-operative CT uh, have the tumor of cinemas and also with the uh, hydrocephalus. Uh, after ETV, uh, then we uh, resect the tumor. Uh. <clears throat> the second factor is uh, deep vein in the lateral uh, ventricle. Uh, you can see there are many uh, deep vein on the wall of the lateral and the surface of the hydrocephalus. If we use the approaches from the lateral vein, we are destroy this deep vein and cause the post-operative uh, post edema and hydrocephalus, it is very really dangerous. So we use a CEDA approaches to uh, gain uh, a benefit to the CSF circulation and uh, 
don't destroy the deep vein and have good result. We use the midline theta approach to resect the tumor. This is our uh, operative position. The tumor is a glioma, grade three. Uh, we resect the tumor. This is the video of the uh, CMS. <coughs> we use the midline approaches to expose the left side uh, cordial geminal uh, system and uh, open the system. We expose the, uh, the tumor. You can see this, uh, this is a uh, CM. We dissect the tumor. And blood. That's it with the tumor. It's blocked. We dial the capsule. The tumor be removed. Coagulated the bleeding. We use uh, Sujifalu Sujifalu and Sujifalu the home stage the tumor be removed next day is uh, about the uh, this is a girl with a uh, uh, climber of uh, cinemas. We also use these approaches, midline approaches, uh, to expose the left side cordial terminal. We open the uh, cordial terminal system and uh, expose the tumor. Again, this is a tumor. We cut the membrane, reconoid membrane. The tumor is very soft, you can see. It will be soft. We can use suction to abstract the tumor. Very easy. You can see the pseudoventricle. You can see. The tumor can easily be uh, absorbed. You can see 
the right wall of the third ventricle, the anterior part of the third ventricle, the follicles, and the anterior commissure, and the laminar terminus. We use the surgical flow to hem staging. If the tumor be removed, you can see the tumor be removed. Next, we use the perimedial set up producer to recept the control lateral tumor. You can see we use the left side approach to recept the right side tumor. This is the tumor of PLNTY. You see, this is a tumor in the right side. We use left side approaches. Is the one bridge the vein. We open the cordial terminal system. You can see the budging of the uh, right side uh, uh, seminars. We cut the seminars. and then expose the tumor. The tumor has a sister. After the least the sister flu, we expose the solid part. To this part, we use suction, uh, kusa, uh, to remove the tumor. Kusa is very useful to this deep, uh, deep side uh, tumor. Tumor be removed. We use uh, Sujiflu, Ham stage. This is Sujiflu. This is a pineal system, uh, as you claim. This is another case of CMs. We also use left side set uh, approaches. This pain also have one uh, bridge vein. We dissect the, we uh, open the system, called your germinal system, but not found the tumor. We uh, shift the pioneer gland and uh, into the uh, pseudovenicle. You can, you can find the uh, analyst. Uh, cinemas. We cut the cinemas.
Vous êtes où, Marc? L'opérating. We use uh, Sergio Fanu. Sergio Fanu is very useful to this deep, deep side. Uh, Come stage. <coughs> Tumor be removed. This is a posterior MR. This is our paper about this approaches to uh, cerebral lesions. Next is uh, EEA for the tumor in the cerebral We can use a uh, transnaminal uh, terminalis. We can also use transtuber uh, uh, <clears throat> sign rim. This uh, the boy, uh, <clears throat> four years old boy with uh, cranial fine tumor. We use this. This is tumor. This is CT. Calculate. We use uh, EEA to recept the tumor. The not tumor. Uh, we can uh, review our past cases. This is uh, uh, this patient we use uh, called bilateral supraintervenous chiasm approaches for cardiophangioma from EEA. The tumor from transnamic terminalis and uh, from a tubular cell room. If the tumor be removed, you can see chiasma and stock. So now we use a uh, trans tubular cell rooms. This patient have two tumors as a uh, so the ventricle, one is at the anterior part, and another large is at the posterior part. The patient has obstructive uh, hydrocephalus, but we can't to do ETV from this part. So we use the EGA trans tube thing room to receive the tumor and receive these two tumors. This is after the, after the tumor be removed. Yeah, the pathology is uh, <clears throat> diffuse midline glioma H three K two seven M air to air This is uh, about the cranial fine tumor. The tumor is purely uh, so the ventricle. Tumors. We remove the dorsal stena and PC, PCP, the right PCP. You cut the dural. We shift the uh, pituitary. Gland, this stop the normal PG. We dissect the arachnoid membrane and uh, it composes the tubular cell room. We open the tubular cell room and release the cystic flow. Then we dissect the, tu uh, the tumor, the capsona from uh, uh, hypothalamus. The interface is very clear. Why we use this approach? Is because the uh, the tumor can urge from this side. The 
tumor be removed, you can see through the ventricle. You can see basal artery and the PCA and the SCA. Then we reset the PG and we use DRG and the HPF to uh, reconstruct of the tumor be removed. You can see the put the operative MR. Let's cover a conclusion. The endoscopic surgery for pseudo shows greater minimal invasive advantages. We can use uh, many lateral surgical approaches to expose and resect tumor in pseudo -ventricle. Thank you very much. Welcome to our uh, China. <clears throat> Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Chai, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Chang. It was a really very impressive and excellent lecture. Uh, I have many, many questions. Uh, could you just tell me, uh, do you use a fixed endoscope holder or somebody holds the scope for you? We use, uh, sometimes we uh, do the operation of EEA, we uh, uh, your uh, the, uh, uh, assistant to hold the uh, uh, endoscope. Uh, but uh, in the cranial uh, uh, surgery, we use a uh, holder. Okay. And uh, do you use a lumbar drain in a cases where you are operate transcranial approach, not by individual, before the surgery to make the brain lax? Or how, no. you, how do you make the brain lax? Do you put EVD? No, we, we don't use uh, 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 EVD. We only use uh, ETV to hide your saveness. No, no. Uh, I mean to say that when you are approaching supracerebellar approach, While performing supracerebral infarctal approach to the thalamus and uh, other lesions in the tumor in the third ventricle, do you use preoperative lumbar drain to make the brain lax in your cases? Hmm? Uh, sometimes, uh, if the patient we we don't use uh, the uh, um, new new uh, puncture. But uh, if the patient uh, with uh, severe hydrocephalus, uh, we use uh, ETV uh, before the uh, uh, save, uh, saving uh, uh, one one week uh, before the uh, uh, receptor the tumor. I have seen in your video you uh, most of time coagulate uh, bridging veins from the tentorium to the cerebellum while performing. Supracerebral infarctal approach. Do you encounter brain bulge in any of your cases or cerebellar edema? And how did you manage it? If yes. It is not a worry. Uh, we from the perimedial approaches, uh, sometimes uh, some patient, uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, one third uh, no uh, bridge the vein, uh, two third have uh, one uh, bridge the vein from the perimedial approaches. So we, uh, uh, at uh, this time, we, uh, uh, we not use the midline approaches. In the early time, uh, we use uh, midline approaches. Okay. And uh, in many cases of the posterior third ventricle tumor, uh, most of the places people use uh, this uh, endoscopic biopsy of the tumor and then they, uh, simultaneous ETV also. 
and then after depending on the histopathology result they proceed either for radiotherapy or different surgery so do you do this uh, procedure uh, etv and simultaneous biopsy in your cases uh, uh, are you straight away operate all these cases no we already about the breathing not to use uh, uh, pathology uh, chest uh, uh, by physic that means uh, you don't prefer uh, it uh, simultaneous etv and tumor biopsy in posterior third ventricle tumors uh, because uh, we found uh, many patient uh, have uh, is uh, mixed uh, germ cell uh, tumors so we don't use the biopsy and uh, what about fornicial manipulation while operating transfernal uh, foraminal uh, approach there is often there is sometime contusion or hem hemorrhage or sometime even tear of the fornix so how do you prevent it padding uh, while performing transforaminal approaches transforaminal from a monro many time there is manipulation of the fornix sometime there is contusion of the fornix sometime there is a uh, hemorrhage over the fornix so it may lead to memory dysfunction in post operatively so how do you prevent it uh if the for uh, for a moro is very narrow or very small uh can't to uh, uh expose and reject the tumor we uh, use uh, or the, the tu tumor is very large so we use this approaches thank you dr chang it was a really very impressive lecture so do we have any questions in the chat box so far none but professor christian rafta paulos and professor malla vaster rao has raised his hand we'll go with professor rafta paulos i would like to thank you sia bia osham for that very nice presentation of course uh, i was astonished by a few points i would i would start by the first one is the first time i see so precisely a transsphenoidal transcellatorsica parapituitary trans uh, uh, tubercinereum to remove a lesion of the third ventricle don't you think that it's a little bit complicated such a, such a approach to remove a tumor of the third ventricle my first question uh, in my cruise coop uh, area we use these approaches uh, i found is very complex but uh, after we use the endoscope approaches we found very simple is very and let to me very clear I, I am impressed because to say that such an approach is very simple is impressing my second question is uh, i have seen that all your tools are outside the 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 endoscope uh, that means that you are still performing uh, flap bone flap and so i think you start with a standard surgery and instead of using a microscope you use an endoscope with all the tools around the endoscope do you agree with that uh, the bone flapper 
uh, is about uh, uh, three centimeters. So you can uh, enough to uh, use uh, this uh, uh, oper operation. Uh, we uh, set the endoscope at the uh, left and uh, up uh, an angle to uh, like the EGA from <coughs> right uh, nasal to uh, ex expose. Uh, then we uh, use the suction from the, uh, we use the left hand uh, uh, under the, the endoscope. We use uh, uh, right hand to use uh, uh, <coughs> other uh, instrument to uh, resect and cut to this uh, uh, compulate. It's very, uh, very free, very free. Okay. My last question is, I was also impressed by the fact that the operating field is always very, very proper. I never saw that you used once flushing water to wash the operating field. Do you, because when I perform my cross-surgery, I use a lot of water to keep my operating field very proper, very neat. In your case, I, I never saw water. How do you do that? <laughs> uh, we uh, very uh, uh, carefully first. Uh, then we uh, uh, interface dissect the interface. Uh, we very uh, like to dissect uh, use the membrane interface. Okay. I would like to thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, you. Yes, Professor Rao. Yeah, yeah. First of all, uh, congratulations. Uh, excellent uh, surgical demonstration. Uh, I also want to know same thing. Interventricular tumors, sometimes they're very vascular. They'll be bleeding. Your surgical field is bloodless. <laughs> Can you, can you give us some tips how you maintain the field bloodless? Uh, no bleeding. I just to see, uh, uh, for example, uh, with the uh, uh, caustic, uh, 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 caustic uh, strong luma, uh, many surgeons. Uh, have uh, uh, bleeding uh, very much, uh, but uh, I found uh, you. Uh, just uh, we uh, don't uh, touch anything. Uh, we only uh, use the uh, uh, very have uh, uh, we dissect the interface, uh, not to. Uh, 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 every everywhere to uh, 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 use uh, uh, dissect or coagulate, uh, uh, and uh, I found is a nest breeding. Mm -hmm. So the the applicator which you you have used for the aneurysm clipping is it is the same for uh, microsurgery or is it a special applicator? You, you have used an applicator for aneurysm clipping. Uh, I use uh, Chang Zhang. Uh, uh, this, this type of. Yes, it's. Uh, you mean single shaft? Revolver. Single shaft. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. My last, yeah, I, I, got, I got it. Thank oh, you. My la uh, la last point. Can, okay. can you please comment about outcome and uh, complications? Huh? Outcomes and complications. 
Oh, is this uh, clip we can to uh, uh, clip the aneurysm uh, use ZA can use? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, you in your entire series, uh, how what is the outcome and what are the complications? Uh, we have uh, sometimes we have, uh, 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 but uh, it's very uh, uh, very few. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, very, 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 very. Anyway, congratulations uh, again. Yeah. Uh, we uh, in the cranial foreign tumor, uh, uh, the uh, communication is uh, like uh, a diabet diabet in septu in uh, and a pain. A hyper pituitary uh, tourism. Mm. Yeah, I understood. Thank you, thank you very much. So indeed, it was a very wonderful lecture, and we all enjoyed it. The surgical expertise is of some level, and we congratulate uh, Dr. Siabao Chang for this wonderful lecture, and also Professor Avdesh Jaiswal for chairing this wonderful session. So now I will wind this up officially on. Uh, on behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Professor Yoko Kato. I would like to thank both the speakers of today, Professor Malla Bhaskara Rao and Professor Siao Biao Chang, as well as Jazz Professor Christian Rafta Paulos and Professor Avdesh Jaiswal for the time and support for the ACNS webinars. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Professor Shubin for broadcasting this webinar on the WeChat channel, as well as my co host, Dr. Libun Singh, for joining me today. So, until we all meet tomorrow online again, it is bye bye from all of us. Thank you very much for joining.